We're back. Hello, hello, Rem. How are you doing? Fantastic, brother. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So what has been new? I've done probably, I don't know, three episodes um, since, since we did the Festivus episode where they were mostly updates and they were mostly my updates. But uh, I do try to update people on kind of what's been going on with you. So I'll let you say what's been going on with you. Hey, man, missed you. I missed you, too. I was glad to help you move. Uh, uh, yeah, that was super nice, man. I still, I still yeah. have more accolades coming for you and Jay, but that'll be in the future. But, um, yeah, man, I've missed this a lot. I, I know some of you guys know I work. I work a lot now, and when I don't work, I take care of my mom. And those things are um, both kind of all-encompassing. Yeah. But my mom, from when I moved into now, is just a world of difference, bro. Like, I, I thought she was blipping out. I thought I was basically just kind of there so that she'd have someone there. But I sort of was like, nah, bitch, fight. Fight. You got fight left in you. Life isn't that bad yet. All right, good, because that was a question I had was, uh, do you mean that for the better or the worse, that she's... No, for, the, for much better. Okay, good. Much right. better, yeah, to, to be yeah. a little more clear. Um, and so that, for me, has been very rewarding. My life lacks a bit of a social life right now, but, like, I'm sort of okay with that because I'm doing, the, I'm doing God's work, you know? But, uh, but yeah, I needed... I was in a point... In a way, it's almost like you're saying you're doing God's plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You like that? And uh, that was solid, bro. Yeah, thank you. The Zenio Odyssey Podcast, where we discuss life from the point of view of people born in the late 1970s to the early to mid-1980s. We discuss growing up analog and navigating adulthood in a digital world. Please come join us as we look to uncover what it actually means to be a Zenio. But, so yeah, it's been time. I've been fighting to get Sundays off for a while. It looks like it's going to be happening in summertime. It might be a Sunday, and then I'll have a different day off during the week. But trying to make this happen. But for me, man, it's just a matter of, like, even watching some of those older, older episodes for me is tough. Because I can see how fucked up I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Like, just fucking, just like, you know, all the, all the, like, a good episode, I think, probably. We did an episode when I got picked up for DMT and ketamine, right? Uh, it was it was a little bit after that, yeah, yeah. I I, I remember, um, I remember it was a little bit after that when we we you know the first time you came on, and uh, yeah, you were just uh, you were you were dealing with uh, an ex girlfriend, you were dealing with a lot of stuff, and then on top of that, you uh, you made yourself some shrimp tea, and you were just like you know, I was just going, going on a journey. I was going too hard though, and like I was going through a period where I was running from shit. I know that now, and that's cool, and it's okay. Yeah. But, you know, I think my big justification was like, well, if it's like mushrooms, it's not meth, so it's okay. But I think that with anything, you can go too fucking far. And I like I, that. Mushrooms, not meth. Yeah. I mean, but to the same degree, if you're doing something three times a week, every week or something, it just, you have to be aware. So I was running from some things, and they're things I wasn't ready to face. Yeah. Um, and it's still scary stuff, just human flaws in yourself. But I needed to, I needed to stop writing, too. Yeah, and I remember that was one of the things we spoke about on the Festivus episode. Uh, you specifically, uh, you spoke about how it the the writing scene does does nothing for you anymore, and it's just not it's not what it was when you first got into it. And on top of the fact, it's no way to make a make a life. No, you fight. Like if you're a freelancer, you're fighting, and you're fighting with all like in, to get work. You're fighting with all the younger people coming in who'll do it cheaper, and. What what disappeared, and I've said this to you, is like the authenticity of writing disappeared. Yeah, it essentially became like they would give you these prefab things, and they would just want you to write them. And so, but I didn't realize how much in how much of a rut I was at the time. I would say, I mean, that must have made it even harder for you because you're you're fighting for like a career and a living while you're fighting for everything, everything you have. Yeah, so it was tough. It was tough, and um. You know, the podcast is one of the things that kept me sane in that time because it was structure. Mm-hmm. You know, it really was. It was something where it was like, all right, at least one day a week I'm useful and can contribute to life. But so I was nervous to work because I was nervous to get back to that because I'd only worked for myself. Um, I mean, honestly, 14 years, right? Yeah. It's been about 14 years since you had had an in-person job where it was like. With steady 40 hours. Yeah. Steady. Yep. And, you know, I wanted to get in the cannabis industry because I love that shit. I think yeah. it's in- incredibly beneficial to people. And I got lucky where I landed. I landed at this place in Middleborough that actually grows it, presses the rosin, makes the edibles. And, um, yeah, it just, it, it, 
I realized within the first month, I was like, okay, this is, this is a good fit. These people are a good fit with me. They tolerate me for how weird I am. That one in itself can be a bit of an issue, you know? They tolerate the Remy? The Remy, you know? And they've learned to love the Remy, which is nice. They it's am- like, you've learned. Yeah. You've learned not to fear the Remy. You've learned to love the Remy. <laughs> because I remember, like, <laughs> even, like, my first month, um, you know, because I dress how I dress, and Boston Magazine was coming in to do a bit on the dispensary, and I, I only worked there for a little while, and one of my bosses pulls me aside, and she's like, hey, Rem, um, listen, Boston Magazine's coming tomorrow. Could you maybe dress normal? Uh, what? I, li- I'm, I, I like that. Uh, that was, uh, like, well, um, well there's, uh, um, hello, boss. There's my normal, and then there's everybody else's, so you're going to have to uh, kind of And she really- meant everyone else's, and I'm like, I don't know how to do that. I went and, like, bought a pair of regular pl- pants at Savers the night before. But, like, since then, and she's been like, yeah, sorry about that. She's like, I love your fashion. You were just a new guy, and you were still kind of weird. We, we weren't quite sure what we were getting we weren't, into. We weren't sure if you were harmless or not. Yeah, yeah, we guy. couldn't tell what kind of weird you were yet, so we weren't feeding into it. But, but it's been nice. It's added structure to my life. It's added, you know, normalcy. It's added a steady paycheck, which I can't tell you the last time that happened. Oh, yeah, I've seen the, uh, I've seen the effects. And anybody who follows Rem has seen the effects. I, 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 don't, I can honestly say, Rem, and I, I'm not even— Yes, I'm trying to say something that's funny, but at the same time, it is quite impressive. I didn't know anybody that had a Crocs collection. Dude, my Croc collection is so fucking nasty. Yeah, it is. It is. I, it like, it's funny because the fact that Crocs got accepted into sneaker culture, that was the change. Because it was like Crocs are a joke. They're practical shoes for nurses. Yeah, yeah. But then Crocs was like, what if we just fuck around and get cross sponsorships with Lucky Charms? And fucking McDonald's and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And then there was that one person who was like, how has no one thought of making Crocs look like crocodiles? Like, why didn't we just lead with that? Yeah, yeah. Th- that should have been the opener. Yeah. You know? But, but yeah, and I think that, like, that, that's the one thing, is I've been doing things for everybody else, and I've been buying myself shoes and clothing. Oh, that's, that's good. I mean, I mean, unlike you, I've been just, you know, saving money for... Uh, <laughs> Uh, bills. <laughs> That's <laughs> like what normal this... people do. Well, well, I mean, bills that I, I know are coming that aren't my everyday bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. I got one, by the way, yesterday. Uh, I, I got I, one yesterday. Well, what kind? Uh, it was for the ambulance ride. Let me guess. Um, 11? Uh, yeah, pretty much. No shit. Pretty much. And that's honestly just because uh, I got it from my health insurance, and my health insurance said it was beneath my deductible so it's like well you pay out of the pocket until you reach the deductible so this is the first bill we got this is what it is and hey that's why anytime i'm yeah. dying i drive myself yeah well i would have but my car was uh yeah that, my car was dead uh, so <laughs> you were sort of your your hand was kind of called yeah so how have things been with you man how's your job so anyway things are good we haven't had a chance to do this we're going to be doing this more again i miss this it feels it feels like being home again i missed you guys a lot um yeah. I know some of you were asking Bob what was up. Just life. Yeah. Just life, man. Just a, an adult life does not allot you as many opportunities to do oh, this no. shit you'd like to. It just no. doesn't. If you're working 40, 40, 50 hours a week, you have relationships, you have things to do. It, it's really, really hard. But oh, I missed you guys. Stroke and uh, I wish we had that so we could just do the Dr- Jeffrey reference. Just stroke a furry wall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When life hands you a Jeffrey, just, uh, you know, stroke a furry wall. So. Back at you, sunshine. Um, How have things been with you? Home life, love, work. Um, I mean, home life. Home life is fine. Um, You know, I think just the typical uh, kind of uh, turbulence that can come along with any kind of uh, you know relationships of that and working your way through them, and that's what makes them more meaningful is when you do work your way through them. Uh, So that was the start of my year. I have said on several of these kind of alone episodes I did. Um, that I did tell you I did want to have opportunities to get outside my comfort zone, and that karma came along and said, well, you didn't, like, specify what that meant. So we were taking you outside of it. Yeah, so life took me outside of that, and it started with just some just, you know, tumultuous things to begin the year and just my personal life, and then it kind of continued with the motor vehicle accident I was in. Um, some just... We both uh, got hit around the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I'm I'm glad to say that uh you know I got a clean bill of health from apparently a hospital that's now bankrupt. So I mean <laughs> Yeah, that whole story you were telling me was crazy. Uh, 
Yeah. So I did talk a little bit about how I went to a Stewart hospital and Stewart uh, is in bankruptcy for people who don't know. And uh, yeah, it was uh, probably why I haven't gotten a bill from them because, uh, you know, they were a bankrupt hospital. So that's good. Um, yeah. Um, I'll get it from the next company. Yay. Oh, yeah. It'll carry and, over, yeah. of course. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, as long as uh, so if it stays true, then I'll just get whatever's left over from my deductible. Yeah. As a bill. So it's like, all right, I'll be like a couple hundred bucks. I'll be like, all right, fine. Move on with my life. That's fine. Um, as far as work goes, things are changing. Yeah. At my job, my job description will be changing. Uh, we're kind of in the, there's people we're kind of in the middle. Some people are like status quo people. Yeah. Like they, they don't want to embrace some of the things of the change. Uh, some of it I get, some of it I don't. Some of it people have shared with me. Um, but some of the change that's coming, will it put me outside my comfort zone? Yeah, but in a way where I'm like, I want to give that a shot. Say a little more. Uh, technology. Ooh. A lot of technology stuff. And I actually had a conversation with someone who is basically my boss. Yeah. I had it on Thursday. And I told them about how we're going to like be involved with, uh, not all of us, but some of us will be involved with making like online courses. Interesting. And I said, You'd like, be good at that. I said, well, you know, I do have a podcast. And I do have equipment I could bring in. I could bring in parts of the studio so we could do voiceovers. Because you can tell that they're using like... Uh, their earbuds, a canned mic, or they're or they're using um like, um AirPods. Yeah, you know that are still connect. You can connect into a laptop, so they're using the microphone that's on the so wire. It's tinny. And oh yes, yeah. it it's it's like hello and welcome to this training. It's yeah. like it's like it's something like that, and you're just I'm I listen to it. I go this, we can make this sound more professional, and that was kind of what I was telling. If them. you want, look, hello, welcome to the training. I could do that. I could. Oh do, yeah, I could do yeah. that for you. Yeah. Perfect, bro. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this training for insert wherever bob works right now like you know that's how we could that's how we could do I'd it fuck with that yeah and and people were excited to hear that and um and some other things they but they, remember they like, bob bob's classic thing okay is being better at his job than everyone and increasing and getting fucked his, over at some point increasing yeah. his own responsibilities yeah. Yeah. by being so oh, good at his job oh no 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 um tell me i'm wrong uh, you know you're you're not wrong but i also learned from our job okay the job we worked at that was the only job I've ever looked at at one point as this is my forever job. And that's when I learned what happens when you are too good. When, when that one way street. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you get abused and abused and fucked over. And so I, you, I see this as an opportunity as it, even if they, cause I all, all, that's a question. That's a conversation for another day, but I view it as like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Cause it's, it's stuff I find fun. Yeah. It's, it kind of gives me more variety in my job. And it's something ultimately I'll be able to put on my resume. Exactly. That is a I have a unique set of skills. That translates into that higher translates pay. into this and more cachet, whether that's at the company or not. Yeah. I leave that door open. Like it could, it could, and that'll be great. Like, sweet. I already know how you guys operate. Great. But if something else came along and it was like worth my while, I'd go. Mm, I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. So that's um, that's where I'm at. Uh, I um. Did some touch and base with uh, some friends I hadn't really touched base with. Speaking of getting older, yeah, we kind of just all get into our our lives routines. Uh, whether you are married, whether you have kids, whether you're just doing your own thing, we're all just doing our own things. And some of them, it's it's like uh, no, it's no offense, friends, but uh, like, hey, do you want to hang out? No. Yeah, it's, I thought I tried to help you. I'm like, listen, I love you. No, you know what I did do that I haven't even told you yet. What's that? I um. I hadn't been fucking with um, Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West as much. Yeah. But I beat the main the main storyline. Finally. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, that just dropped on PC. I'm going to pick it up this yeah. year. And it was only because it took me this long because I was just literally like, I'm going to try to maximize my weapons and my character and kind of see where this goes. Are they setting up for a third one? Oh, absolutely. They're making a show right now. Yeah. As they should. And speaking of that, since we last came on, what dropped that we were a little haphazard about, but it ended up being phenomenal? Fallout. Fallout. The TV show. Well, Amazon Prime, by the way, continues to kill it. Yeah, I have to say, man, you know, in between that and Invincible, they have a couple real yep. fucking winners. And The Boys. The Boys. Which, which um, the, the, the next season is supposed to be coming out soon. And then their spinoff was really good. Gen Z, or was yeah. it? Unfortunately, Gen unfo unfortunately, we lost. Um, yeah, the motorcycle yeah. dude. And I, I, the first thing I ever saw him in was um, Sabrina. Me too. Yeah. And he was awesome in he that. He kind of stole it. He was an awesome actor. And yeah. it sucks that uh, he passed. He he was killed in a car accident or a motor vehicle accident, a motorcycle accident. Right at like, you know, that's one of those things at the prime of your shit. Yeah, he was like, in his late twenties, right? You're just yeah. taken off, bro. Yeah. Poor, like just, and it sucks. Yeah. Cause he, you could see that like, yeah, whether he was going to be typecast in like 
supernatural and superhero stuff. He was going to kill it anyway, so it didn't matter. Yeah, he had that cool British accent. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, he just, and he also had that British cool. Yeah, yeah, he just had yeah. it. He had it. It was a shame. But, um, but yeah, Fallout came out, you know, and all the video game shows have been kind of shitty. Halo sucked. Like, yeah. Last of Us was good, but it's an exception. But Fallout just, I don't know how they got it so fucking right. Yeah, because what uh, the best thing I can say about it with feedback I've gotten from people who have also watched it was that uh, some who have never played the video games are playing now. They're playing now, but they're also like it. It wasn't like something that got so like focused on. No, not at all. The video game that you get lost. But then for people that have played the video games, there was enough for us too that were like, "I like that you did that. Yeah, I, I like you did that." And then um, the casting was incredible. Goggins, man. Yeah. I would watch Goggins in anything. I would watch him read The New Yorker. Yeah. Like, not even the cool, the good parts of The New Yorker. All right. So he's got, like, this big-toothed alpha <laughs> energy. Yeah. Um, I like how you put the big-tooth alpha on your energy. No, that's what I it like is. That. It's like, ugh. He's got, like, a McConaughey-ness to it. Yeah. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, you know, where you just, like, you feel him and you want to hear what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah, I do. The girl, yeah. too. The girl who was the lead in it she was, was incre- fantastic, yeah. dude. You know, I saw her in the show Yellow Jackets remarkable in that as well that's one i've wanted to watch that uh looks watch like it. it's a phenomenal watch show. it with the lady bro yeah honestly phenomenal you know it's female lord of the flies yellow jackets yeah, yeah. even the name yeah she's she's at home right now watching uh evil evil yeah the I new was, season uh no we started from season one have you you just started the show yeah oh yeah i'm jealous of you yeah it's it's so far yeah it's and i and and because uh he was luke cage yeah like and i wish luke cage could i understand marvel Bought out by Disney, Disney Plus, no, and everything. No, he was perfect. Yeah, he was awesome. And uh, he's a you know, priest who's trying to figure out. They're, they're trying to debunk are, evil shit. Yes, you know, yeah, a skeptical priest, which hmm. is cool. Novel that, and I'm not saying that to be like, like condescending or a dick. That's a pretty novel concept. And yeah. they go to some like for a CBS show. I'm shocked at how much they pull off in it. Yeah, it, it's pretty dark. Yeah, the part with the uh, the part with the. The demon like, taking that. her panties off and just like kissing her, her C section. Scott, like, what? Like, I was like, this is not regular TV. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. No, it's really good. And the new season just dropped. Um, two new episodes came out and they're fantastic. Yep. And then um, last season, though, this season is the last one. Yeah. I, I, knew, I knew that this season was the last season. So, yeah, I mean, doing what uh, people our age do, I, I think. Well, Middle aged people do. Yeah. We, we still play video games and we watch TV we about video games. Binge the shit. We, we binge watch things on streaming networks because network TV is dead. It's yeah. dead. It's dead. And I don't need uh, to see another like cop drama. No. No, you're right. Or, or, um, or ER. Or another hospital drama, Any or another shit. fire rescue drama, lawyer drama. Because uh, that's, I mean, it's essentially what it is right now. Yeah, there's like four. Hey, types let's of watch shows. an hour of. Uh, let's watch an hour of the guy from Firefly as a cop. Yeah. Hey, let's watch an hour of My EMTs. Mom loves Nathan Fillion in all those shows. Yeah, I get it. The guy from Firefly. Yeah, yeah she loves. I get him. it. I love. Let's listen. Listen. He's always going to hit. Yeah, he's always going to hit because he was awesome. Just a legit guy. He was awesome. And Serenity doesn't get a, never gets enough credit as a standalone. No, movie. I would argue post Star Wars, it's one of the best mm. of those. Yep. The, the space cowboy shit. Yeah. And then the fight scene that goes from space to the planet is one of the most incredible, like CGI. Filmed and it, shit. It, yeah. It's what it's what you wish CGI was across the board. Like they they were the first ones to do like that that high action with CGI, like zooming in yeah. to, to really build like up. Like kinetic, the, like you yep. feel like you're there flying through it. And then, and then again, the cast of, of, of that and everywhere they've gone. Yeah. That just... W- wonderful. And so, yeah, that's what we've been doing and also been just like randomly hitting each other up and being like, hey, I just was uh, th- thought of this and this would be great for the, uh, for the podcast. And what do you think? Oh, yeah. Oh, so I guess actually because it's going to be easy to gloss over. Another big thing that's happened that everyone's been talking about has been this Kendrick and Drafe. Do you want to take it? Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. So what Remy's talking about, and Remy's going to take the lead on this because one thing that I have continued with and has gotten worse as I've gotten older is my complete disdain for pop culture. Of course. Um, So Remy takes the lead on that. And what Remy's referencing is uh, just the, um, I'm not going to say lobbing Molotov cocktails back and forth. It's more like, one it's, side playing ping pong, the other side throwing grenades. Uh, well, I was going to say one side has a rocket launcher and the other side has a Roman candle. There you go. And he yeah. hits him, and he keeps hitting himself and in the dick. He's dropping it. it. Yeah. Well, um, me, me and um, Bob have never been Drake fans. Drake is is homogenized, pasteurized, fake, overproduced, um, culture exploiting hip hop from a half white Canadian guy. Remy, what what's your problem with Aubrey? 
Um, What's your problem with uh, with uh, someone who played a handicapped character on a Canadian teen show? On a Canadian teen show. And I, and I don't want to knock Degrassi because Degrassi no, like, it has, has its moments where it's great. It's epic great for what it was, but yeah. our, our country didn't raise with it. He's an actor. Yeah. He's a fucking player. He's, yeah, he's playing, playing a, a role of a, of a rap of a rapper and producer. And somehow people, and this is the thing that a lot of us didn't understand, is somehow people were like, okay. He got, because he got, he he, hooked, he aligned himself with the people that could, that was the people you align yourself with. Yeah. That's what he did. You know, kudos to him, all right. But yeah, you're just a manufactured product. That's all you are. Um, that's why on like one of, I mean, he had a lot of big tracks. Yeah. But I always go back to when he was on that track in 2009 with uh, Lil Wayne and, he, and Eminem. And you just, you hear the difference of, yeah, you know what? They wrote their own lyrics, and then they they sang, and then there's a reason why Emmett, why Marshall Mathers is at the end of that. Yeah, because he w- he's still showing you he still got it, top dog, and you're just like, yeah, this is my flow, and it and by the way, it doesn't match anybody else's. Yeah, you know, to he, the beat. Eminem's even said he has the third worst verse on that record. Yeah, that's how yeah. crazy that record is. Yeah. Um. So basically, what happened was. So there was this, th- this is just it 101. So there was this 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 theory that J. Cole, Kendrick, and Drake are the big three right now. They're the guys selling out tours, selling singles, selling records. Um, so naturally, there's a huge discrepancy between them because Kendrick is like a prophet for his people. He really is. I'm sorry. Like There's nothing to be sorry about. Listening to a Kendrick record, especially as a writer, is profound. Is it? Uh, and please correct me, but this. So this is my take on Kendrick Lamar. He is the closest of those three. He's the, clo- in my opinion, he's the closest of anybody doing hip hop right now to what we grew up with. Yeah, and and being a poet. Yeah, and that's but that's what I mean because like like Mos Def yeah. is a poet. Yeah. You know, common. And then, yes, common a poet um, who can who can also rap. Q Tip. Yes, um, but I, but be, even beyond that, like he because uh, what I appreciate about Kendrick, Kendrick Lamar is uh, he can write you a hit, and he can also write you a shitload of deep tracks, Crazy and they're, and they're all going to slam. Yep. And they're all going to slam. So you got these two dudes who are kind of playing in different leagues, and, and Drake initially fired some shots, which started like a battle between them. I think he just needed attention. Yeah, and I, I think to an extent, Drake is, obviously, we've talked about it, he's a pedophile, he's a sociopath. Like, we were talking about... Millie Bobby Brown. Yeah, yeah. like, you don't... As a grown man in his 30s or 40s, you don't text a 13-year-old girl and tell her you miss her and shit. And hang out with her obsessively. Yeah, and, like, he groomed her parents. He took them all out mm-hmm. to this fancy dinner. It's just super weird shit, and people have always known it. Um, but essentially, the, the battle ended up being, like, Drake being, like, you smell like poo-poo, and Kendrick being, like, you're a rapist. You're, a, you're awful. No one actually likes you. We tolerate you. Mm-hmm. And there's all these subtle, like, like, Things you don't pick up on, like for an example, even when he says, you know, trying to strike a chord and it's probably a minor, <laughs> sings that in a minor. By the way, here's what's crazy about that line that a lot of people don't understand: the A minor scale is the only scale on a piano that uses all white keys. Oh, and he says Drake's not, oh. he's not like us. They not mm-hmm. like us. They not. And he says, mm-hmm. um, he calls him a fan, but fan is. Actually, an acronym for freaky ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's all these subtles in it, but essentially, like, it wasn't even a battle. And and it was funny because... It was a hit. No, no, that was it. It It was one person just went in and just fucked the other one up. And It's essentially what Eminem and Jake... uh, No, no, not Jake Paul. Any battle Um, with Eminem. MGK. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. But any battle with Eminem's like that. I know. It'll change your fucking career. I know. Um, But it was changed him to punk rock. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) Bad punk rock. Bad punk rock, yeah. But it was interesting because you see this guy with so much credibility and this guy who realizes he's losing and you see him start doing weird shit like saying, um, even before Kendrick dropped the A minor... There's, like, songs where Drake's like, I'm not a pedophile. I didn't fuck Millie Bobby Brown. And it's like, bro, um, there you go. Well, you know what I'm saying? Drake's whole angle was I'm too rich to be a pedophile. Those are the people who are pedophiles. Yeah, you know who else used to say they were too rich to do stuff? Epstein. Um, I was going to say Whitney Houston. Yeah. I don't smoke crack. I'm too rich for that. She she is on the record. She said that once. She did say that. That's crazy. And what did she die of? Crack. Yeah. So it was Crack, just... apparently, to, to be fair to her, crack was whack. Died in a bathtub. Yeah. Um, but it was this interesting moment in time, too, also, though, because I feel like for a lot of people, it became really strange how to the forefront of pop culture that battle went. Mm-hmm. Like, 
my mom was like 75 and sort of out of it one day. I came home from work and she's like, who do you prefer, Drake or Kendrick? And I was like, how the fuck do you know <laughs> to ask me that? Mom, the fuck? She's like, the news was talking about it. I'm like, oh, this is fucking weird. So it, does that also speak to how uh, desperate um, pop culture is for attention? Yeah, I mean, touche, though. Yeah. It, and I know I'm saying that as someone who finds pop culture wretched. Yeah, it but, is wretched. But um, I'm saying that of, like, there really was, hasn't been a lot going on for um, to catch. There's, there's a lot going on. but there's No, a but lot. not in pop culture. You're right. Yeah, and the, and the stuff that is going on is more like a, we've been here, done that, and we're tired of it. Like, we're Yeah, we're not even going to bring up the politics right now. No. Fuck it. Everyone's fighting. No. It's a bunch of bullshit. We're just going to skim right over that. Yeah. That ain't what we talk about here. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we'll give our theories on on the war right now, and and, and you know, which two, one? The two warring <laughs> sides that everyone's discussing. Uh, there's only two. <laughs> um, but here's the thing: I'm just I'm weird, and I'm just gonna say that I think we have too much to fix here to be fixing other countries and saving other countries. Well, uh, again, I'm bringing it back to something we used to talk about in the first season, yeah. of the podcast, and that is how relevant 25 years later, the middle children of history is today. Yeah. The speech from Fight Club. Yep. And we had no place. We had no. Yep. And we're and by the way, we're all very, very pissed off. Pissed off. Yeah, that carries. Yep. Mm -hmm. That carries. But I also wonder too if the battle was like some distraction from some of the more fucked up shit that yeah, was it's going on. A distraction. You know it what I mean? Is. It always is. Like we're in a society now where we can hardly pay for groceries. You can hardly pay your rent. You can hardly mm -hmm. fucking fill your tank. And we're all worried about how two rappers feel about each other. So it, it's been no, interesting. Well, not all of us. My my wife showed me, um, she showed me a TikTok of someone she went to high school with this morning, and uh, they were going to war with uh, Seth MacFarlane. And then she, and then she went down some rabbit holes and then found out that it was basically like, obviously someone from like India or Pakistan. Seth MacFarlane, who she <laughs> was, who she was falling into a scam with. Oh my god! But then she was, but she was responding to the real Seth MacFarlane, and he so he has no idea. What yeah, and he's like probably looking at he probably gets like a hundred of those a day, and he's like, all right. But I was like, what? I was like, wow, and and like just to watch these these like videos and see how someone truly, genuinely unhinged. Wow, calling him like a pedophile and a rapist just cause because they're yeah, just cause and saying how she used to have a crush on him, and then like in the same thing calling him a pedophile, and that's why no one can love you, even though I <laughs> like I'm like. Wow! Ooh, this is uh this is a manifesto. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's um, yeah. It's, the 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 temperature is is uh is uh fucked outside. Yeah, yeah, out there. It's been nuts. Um, I I I did uh for my own entertainment recently. I did stoke some political fires with some people. You do like to do that. I do that, but I did it because I was trying to watch a hockey game in a public scent, and I didn't want to have to answer twenty questions to somebody. That's fair. Like I just I'm like I'm watching. Read my read my body language. Like you're asking me, and I'm tensing up because you're pissing me off. So then I was like, oh okay. And so I stoked fires between two people who are ideologically different. And then stood back. And then stood back and went back to watching a hockey game as my other friend. There were four of us. My friend came and sat next to me as we watched the carnage unfold. And I told people if it was like a play, like the 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 spotlight would have left them and left us to do the sidebar. Just looking. And he did ask me like political questions. And he was just like, I'm going to take what you said a step further. And, and he was just like, well, what do you think? I said, I said we're fucked. And, yeah. he goes, and he goes, well, in what way? I said, pick a way. We're fucked. We're fucked this way. We're fucked this way. We're fucked this way. You know what? If it's If I can relate it again to, to a bit, that we've talked about on here, but it is topical. Always oh, sunny in Philadelphia about politics. Well, I could vote for this person and get bent over and fucked in the ass, or I could vote for them and get bent over and fucked in the ass. Who do and I want to fuck it, me? Yeah, it's who do I want to be bent over and fucked by? Neither. And, and, and beyond that, and it's beyond that too, because then we talked about some world stuff like you brought up, and I agree with you. And then I just, I, I, I'm not going to hold back. I'm like, look, look, what does it matter who our leader is when the skids have been greased for World War III and we're on the verge of civil war in our own country? We're, we're fucked. And that's not being we're addressed. That's we're fucked. Just... We're fucked. And what, yeah, and so what are we as a society talking about? We're going after, we're trying to go after celebrities when it was AI bots or whatever that was doing that. Yeah. And then we have uh, beefs, which really is just like a... Playground. Um, yeah. Playground quarrel between two little kid grownups. Yeah. And this is the stuff that goes on when we don't podcast, and it gives us wonderful stuff to come on and have, be topical about, though. But unfortunately, we can't come back and say, "Oh yeah, things are better than when we last." Oh saw no, things you. things are things are uh, things are progressively getting worse, and it's really just about and, and we're progressively getting divided because uh, on some level we all choose to and we choose our indoctrination, 
and we just go to our separate corners and that's what they want. And at some point, it's just going to lead to just this complete tomfuckery. And uh, I watched that Civil War movie the other night, that new movie that came out. Yeah. You know about it? No. Alex Garland. It's called Civil War. It's about America at, in a civil war. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I believe it. I, I, I'm a firm believer in that at some point, our, our, our country will just align along, will become sub countries along geographic regions. Yeah. Where culturally, subculturally, like people have shared interests. That stuff makes sense to me. And I could see that happening. And then and people say whatever, and, and, and I'm just like, but it's like, but do we want that? Yeah. And if we do, okay. But if we don't, then how do we fix it? What do we do at this point? Because, because no one's doing anything to fix it. And we're just kind of letting it be a runaway train. Right yeah. Now. Just trying not to stand in its path, but yeah. it's inevitable. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot going on. And uh, inflation is still inflation. Crazy, man. Yeah. It's but still 200 um, bucks a week on groceries. Remy, I, I on uh, yesterday, I went and got ant traps. And I went and got deodorant. And I went and got, like, latex gloves because I'm a weirdo. Like, I need to wear, like, something if I'm cleaning. Yeah, I get it. You know, I'm a serial killer. That's why. You know, no, no fingerprints. No fingerprints, yeah. baby. Yeah. Um, and I got, uh, like, a beard wash. It was, like, $55 for all that. For what used to be a, tw a $20 stop. Yeah, I got four things, and it was $55. On top of the fact, I went to the, I went to the end of the earth. And the and the and the top layer level of hell, which was Walmart, to get it. Yeah, and screw between screaming children and just people. I'm almost just, just a fully uh, Amazon guy at this yeah, point. I'm I, I should have. I'm. But. I hate supporting Bezos because he's a cocksucker. But like, going out in that shit, man. Sometimes did, it just fucking kills me. Did you see what uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson took him in? Um, uh, Branson from Virgin. Yeah. Took him them to task about their rockets and how their rockets go into zero gravity, and they don't. He they said don't. They, he they said go they just don't. in the layer under, and then yeah. they, yeah. He said they don't even go high enough so you can see the full curvature of the Earth. He said they basically go to where I um, met Branson. Really? Yeah, it was one of, really? one of the trips I had to do um, when I was flown out to cover the Virgin Free Fest, which was essentially a free Coachella right before Coachella started. Now, please correct me if I'm wrong. He strikes me as a guy who just happened into, at least on some hand, I don't want to say he, because he is brilliant. Yeah. Um, but on some hand, hand, he did happen into as much wealth as he does have. And he, and of, of like the three, the big three, like him, Elon, and Bezos, is yeah. he the most normal, like, or the most? No. Or he's not even the most normal not of those all. three fuckers? He walked through that, wow. hit a pier once they were, it was three days of shows. Tons of incredible acts. I got to be on stage with Jack White. Bunch of like, it was cool. But I'm comparing him to people who are essentially like robots. No, he would, wow. he'd come through the crowd, and he'd do this like Jesus thing, and it was one of the most well, that I can see. I can it was see one of the most insane things I've ever seen in person. Jesus, Jesus, or like Jesus Christ, superstar. Jesus, hmm. <laughs> he's like a little, a little calm, thinking man, he's yeah. Jesus, looking like Jesus Christ, superstar <laughs> is the best way okay. to put it. All right, um, all right. And you just watch him. He's literally coming through the crowd like this, dude. And people are running up and kissing his cheeks and shaking his hands. Oh, that's more disgusting than him actually doing it. Because he knows, like, yeah, it was, he knows he can pander and it'll play. It was fucking crazy. And it was funny because he everyone I was with who went out to this event were trying desperately to take pictures with him. And I wasn't. And so he came up to me. That's how it always is. Yeah. I'm just like, hey, what's up? That was it. I mean, that was the extent of it. He sat in VIP and wanted people to, like, ask him questions. But the best thing about it, it, it was held in Maryland, of all places. I think that's pretty. Uh, that's a pretty neutral place to hold things. And there yeah. was fucking tons of fresh crab cakes backstage. I was just oh, well, eating crab cakes, yeah. bro. Yeah. I was just eating crab cakes. Jack White, Nas is walking by. I'm just like, give me some more of them crab cakes, motherfucker. So, anyway, yeah. No, but it was so... It was one of the most... I'm separated fully from reality things I've ever seen in person. And that's why we need people like R Ricky Gervais. Yeah, to be yeah. like, you're a cunt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, You, sir, yeah. are a cunt. Yes. You think you're floating above the ground, but you're leaving a pile of shit wherever you go. And I would also say someone like Matt Berry. We need I people. Love Matt I love Barry. him. Have you, have you seen him do the voiceover for Thomas and Friends? Have you seen that? It's on YouTube. I don't think so. Oh, I'm not going to spoil that for you. You need to, you need to look that up. That yeah. magnificent bastard. Yeah. Oh, it's just, even, no, no. He just, yeah. No, I know. He does um, nature specials, too. And he'll <laughs> oh. be like, you'll see this. Thomas gets stuck on the track, and an old lady came out of her car and said, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> he also does a live tour where he reads famous letters. Oh. So if that ever comes around, we should hit it up, oh. bro. You know they're doing their last season. Who? What We Do in the Shadows. 
You kind of have to because it's yeah. masterful. You can't yeah. let it run too long. Yeah, that's one you gotta like. You have to go out when you're on top. Hundred yeah. percent. One of the smartest, funniest, well acted, mm. well written comedies. I love them all. Like I can't. I don't have a favorite. I mean, yeah. I mean, all honestly, I'm not gonna like Colin. Barry. Colin Robinson is my oh. my favorite. My favorite character on the yeah. show. Matt Berry's my favorite performer. Person. Yeah. But Laszlo is one of my he's favorite incredible. characters too. Yeah. He's just so dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to like um, Guillermo because he's charming. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or okay, even Nandor. No, of course. Uh, yeah. No, that's and, why I said uh, the dumb one. Yeah. And uh, the relentless. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's masterful stuff and out of nowhere where he's trying to be proper and then it's just like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> uh, so how have you guys been yeah that's one thing we could always uh, again interactive um and one thing that i have wanted to do um shout out to mike snellgrove and that probably wrong podcast because they've been upping their their game they're on youtube now they're on YouTube, but they do live. Hell yeah. They do live. I interact with them sometimes. Nice. Um, where I just chime in, and sometimes I'm, I, it's, it's informative, but sometimes I'm really just trying to get them to laugh. Yeah. As I'm just like, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's not be all serious about sports talk. Let's, uh, let's have some fun, man. Let's have some, let's have some fun. Um, but yeah, doing a live thing where we could have people that in real time interacting. That'd be fun as fuck. Yeah. And just uh, having, a, having a grand old time. But yeah, that's uh that I love I love this like reentry stuff. So I love it when we can just flow and there's no there's no nothing essentially. Yeah, it's just wanted to say hi. Want to let you know we miss you. We're working on it. Mm -hmm. We're working on. We're, oh, as always, we are a life in progress. Life is a work in progress. And while we have a little time, we're about to do another episode. So stay yeah. tuned. Yeah. So this was one. This was one. You get one. We're gonna yeah do another one. And uh, yeah, glad to. Glad to have you. Look at that. Hands across America. Glad to right be there. back, brother. I yep. miss this shit. Yeah, I'm glad you are back. This is this is uh this is great. And I, I'm not not that I think I'm dull. It's just like a I feel I feel like if I come We're a on good here, team. I feel like if I come on here by myself and we are a good team, that I'm more like I'm more like uh vlogging or like e journaling without like trying to pitch you like Hello Fresh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm making my and I do I do like and subscribe. I don't, I won't lie. I do watch some of those influencers on YouTube just so I can laugh my ass off. I will tell you, um, when I was with my crazy, crazy ex-girlfriend two girlfriends ago and she couldn't manage to take care of herself as an adult. Yeah. Um, Hello Fresh was amazing. <laughs> so Not she even, was a pusher of it, huh? No, no. I pushed it on her because oh. she didn't know how to take care of herself. Okay. So I got her the, yeah. I got her it. But like I was pretty impressed, man. Yeah, it does look so good. It Hello does look Fresh. Good. I mean, if you're yeah, out there, I've yeah. actually tried your product and yeah. it was decent. We had to cancel because she's a flaming cunt and I wasn't going to pay that anymore mm -hmm. after we broke up. But well, that's fair. But yeah, Hello Fresh was decent. Fair on all accounts. All right, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll take we'll leave you with that. A little bit shorter. I hope that you're all doing well. Yeah, we do. And uh, everyone, just stay safe and take care. We'll see you soon.